What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 351 of Opinions May Vary. I'm your host, Jared. My host with me, Alex. Hello. How's it going? Pretty good. It has been so long. I missed you. I've since jo- like visited other states. There's a lot of distance last, between us. The last time, yeah, yeah, hundreds of miles between us. It was a sad time, but we're back, and uh, I'm happy to see you. So, I'm glad you're back. You don't have to say it back I'm, to me. But I am. You don't have to. I'm more glad to see our guest. Our guest... Of course, making his triumphant return is uh, our main man, Colin. Hey, I'm glad you say that it's a triumphant return because I never know how successful my my stays are here in the in seat number three. They're pre- this is this is one of those things. It's like it's like a redemption episode. Oh, thank God! Because because <laughs> I needed one. Sadly, the last time we did one of these specific ones, uh, you were indisposed. This is true. When we did our PAX East re- uh, recap. Oh, right. We were calling lists, unfortunately, and um, you were dearly missed. Joe did his best to fill your seat. He, and I mean, he did a great, you know what? He did a damn fine he's job. He's pretty much the only person you who know. could even try it. <laughs> the, the, any, even if I'm not around, I still enjoy the show. And I'm a really vain person. So. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. 100%. But uh, we're, we're getting another opportunity this year because PAX Unplugged was last week. Actually, at this time last week, like Colin was meeting up at my place to spend mm-hmm. the night, so we can go up the morning. Up yeah, had a little had a little slumber party. Slumber party time. So, we have a lot, a lot to talk about because, uh, unlike this year's this year's PAX Unplugged, was the exact opposite of last year's PAX Unplugged in terms of my experience, our mm-hmm. experience. It was Colin's first time. My first time, yeah. Uh, let, people may recall last year, my lovely wife came along with me. It was her first ever convention ever. Uh, since then, she's come to. She went to New York Comic Con with us this year, which mm-hmm. is really fun. Um, Two very, very different conventions. <laughs> oh, massively, yeah. Yeah. yeah, massively different. So was she like post New York Comic Con or post PAX? Like I could do New York <laughs> Comic Con. Like, I mean, I I've been pitching that. New York to her for a while because mm-hmm. I think that there's enough there that she would dig it. Um, yeah, she seemed to dig it, but she's one of those, uh, one of the thousands of reasons as to why I don't deserve her. She, you would never ever know if she wasn't having a good time. Cause like, that's just not, she's, she knows that it's like the thing for us, you know? (laughs) Um, so she'd never be huffy. And she knows that you're having a good time. Yeah. Yep. So if she was miserable, I I have no idea. She seemed to enjoy it. She real chill. Yeah. She was pretty chill. (laughs) She real chill. And, uh, we had a really good time last year at Unplugged. Uh, go back and listen to our recap. If you don't know what I'm talking about last year, uh, didn't play a single game at a tabletop convention. Um, (laughs) chalk it up to many different things but i did we we took like the panel route i wanted to go see as many panels and shows as possible because mm-hmm. i knew i wasn't really going to be playing much because i have massive social anxiety this year i had colin to lean on <laughs> they call me a social buffer babe it was literally uh probably be a half a dozen times at this show it was colin literally walking and start let's find a game just find <laughs> There's a chair. Hey, is this get you demoing? Cool, let's play. <laughs> Don't even know what it is. Don't care. Let's just play this game. My problem with this, usually, when like we will do PAX East, is I'll commit myself and I'll be like, I want to play a game, mm-hmm. but I'm too much in Alex mode. Where you're like hunting. And I, and I don't want to stand still for more than five yeah. minutes. And if I can't commit, like I just... I can't bring it on myself to like sit down at an entire convention for more than like five minutes. Right. I have to like really decide this is what I'm going to do right now. Mm-hmm. I'm going to learn this game. I'm going to play around and see if I like it and not just like look over someone else's shoulder and be like, oh, that's neat. And then like try and make a decision off of my 20 seconds of, of viewing time of not actually doing anything myself. I um, so I, I have to approach things differently than how I usually do. And I mean, when it comes to conventions, you're like a hunter. Mm-hmm. And I'll be more of a gatherer in this in this <laughs> weird metaphor because, like, I wasn't. I was kind of the same way with conventions. Like, uh, it wasn't until I think last PAX East where I was like, you know what? I'm here for another day. Like, mm-hmm. I'm just going to sit here for. I'll sacrifice the 20 minutes it'll take to learn this thing, mm-hmm. and that way I can enjoy it. Because otherwise, I'll have. It's it's easy to have like. Um, uh, real like uh, fear of missing out on all the other things that are right. around. So yeah, yeah, see yeah, so many things. Exactly. But in a convention, especially for one that's just board games, like screw it, man. I'm I'm gonna have to 
it's it sounds weird saying to give up your time, but your time is valuable. You're investing it now. Exactly. Yeah. So now you might as well just be like, screw it. I'm gonna be in it. I'm gonna. This is what I'm here for. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna talk to the to the person who made this game and understands it better. I'm gonna ask questions. Then we're mm-hmm. gonna play and we're gonna take. We actually ran into a point where we like we're taking too much time with the game, <laughs> and they were like, okay, we got more people who want to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get into that one. Man, that was a patient patient man because we sucked at that game yeah but that game was so much fun it was it was neat it was, it was really neat. fun i don't i didn't get it mm. in terms of like because i and i was we were talking about this with our buddy ken uh former uh, omb guest earlier today where like i uh maybe i'm just bad at understanding games and i need to like really go over them but like sometimes i struggle sometimes most of the time i struggle you know, like you're getting the rules pitched from the person mm-hmm. and you're trying to take it all in as quick as you can. Yeah. And then you're playing the game. Oh shit. Wait, well, how do you, how do you, how do you do this? <laughs> What's the game? And like, I, I'm kind of, I know exactly where you're coming from with what you were saying, Alex, like, cause we'd sit down to play a game and like five minutes in, I'm done. I'm checked out. Yeah. I want to play something else. Yeah. This game is really cool, but I feel like I'm missing so much right now. Yeah. Right. Um, and I absolutely get that. So, like, when we spent more than like ten minutes on a game, I started to get really antsy, and I just wanted it to be over. Um, not because the game was bad, but because there's so much going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And luckily, with PAX Unplugged, since it's all board games, all tabletop card games, stuff like that, it's it's much. It's obviously less intense and packed than PAX East is, um, but also like, it's built for sitting down and relaxing. Like each booth yep. has like. Okay, you're gonna come hang out. There's room for you. You can like sit here, mm-hmm. or it's established so you can come in. Like, depending on the game, sometimes it's like set dressed to play yeah. in a situation in a game. Like the first game we played, um, I don't know if it was the first game, but it was the I uh, believe it was the first the game, Japan, yeah, um, series of game where you were sitting. It was like uh, a Jap- Jordan Draper Games. Jordan Draper Games is a series of games based on. Um, he makes board games based on where he's living. So he's lived in Italy and he's made like a series of like little cool games. Uh-huh. And he, currently he lives in Japan. And so he had like three different Japanese um, kind of like cultural based games, but not the same kind of thing that you would think like Japanese vending machine based game uh-huh. or Japanese architecture. And we played the architecture one. What was cool about it was like you were sat at like what looked like a little Japanese tea table. So we had like little cushions on the floor, yeah. you know, and, a sh- and it was a short, short little table. Um, and it's really interesting to be put like in the, it was like an environment. So it was cool. I like the way that they kind of, some of those booths are set up to be like, if you're playing the game and now you're actually in a, in a, it's <laughs> in an it's environment. A, yeah, yeah. Stage. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's weird. I, I'm, I'm I think really rambling. To... Oh no, yeah. I get it. Yeah. You get it, okay? Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. it. Okay. Alex gets it. <laughs> this guy gets it, because I mean that shit's awesome. Like the people, the the amount of work people put into this. Like I'm obviously it's it's very very difficult to make video games, but mm-hmm. I can kind of wrap my head around like the programming of it and mm-hmm. come up with a story like that. Like I get that, but I'm very impressed with people who can make the mechanics of a of a card game or mm-hmm. a board game or something. Um, and because since I've made friends with you guys, I've become much more ingrained in board games and like outside of like Clue and Sorry, <laughs> you know, like shit like that. Now I I'm so dwarfed by like someone explaining a game that they like. Th- I came up. This is my a creation. Like yeah. I made up the rules, and we had to. We were talking to one of the creators, and I was like, "How long has it been in development?" He's like, two years." <laughs> and it's like Jesus. <laughs> Like when I make up a game with my friends, we like make it up in twenty minutes, and then when we figure out a rule doesn't work, we just be like, "Yeah, well, whatever." <laughs> That's the end of that. Yeah. <laughs> so I uh, I was really impressed, and I was I was really pumped going into it because I knew it was just going to be hanging out with my boy and <laughs> uh, playing games and stuff, and like that's rad. The thing about about uh, PAX East, it's it's super packed. There's a lot of people, mm-hmm. so I loved that this one was much more dedicated just to trying things that I might not necessarily have ever had a chance to try. Right. Like PAX East is like, oh, I want to try this game that I'll play in four months anyways. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, indie games is a little different, but like, so that was really interesting to me. I was I was pumped to, to come along for that, so I was excited to, that you invited me. To rewind a bit, if you don't know, PAX Unplugged, mm. it's, a new, it's a newer PAX, second ever. It's in Philly, out in the uh, in the Pennsylvania area, it was in a little bit later than last year. 
end of November as opposed to mid November. So I was a little hesitant. We talking talking real cold because this is one thing that I found out. It's that people that go to PAX love to complain about the weather. And because uh, East mm -hmm. every other year is in March, yeah. it rotates between March and April. And the year it's in March, uh, people on Reddit explode. Why do they do this every year? They don't seem to understand contracts and how contracts work and how the building isn't just for PAX East. There are many other things that happen in that building. But anyways, I digress. Philadelphia in November slash December because it went November thirtieth to December first. It actually was fine. Walking around in a hoodie, very comfortable, totally fine. Yeah, it was actually really nice weather. Philadelphia is a really cool city. There were some changes as compared to uh, to last year's Unplugged. Last year's Unplugged was a little bit small. Uh, pretty much the entirety of the show, aside from panel rooms, was in one room, like the main kind of vendor hall. Last year, you had your your free play area, you had your demo area. And then off in the corner of the main the main floor was mm -hmm. the main stage. They had yeah. like it it was roped off like big giant curtains so you couldn't see it, but they had the main stage area with all the chairs over there. So could you hear it all weekend? A little bit. Okay. Um, it was loud in the room, so but every now and then you could hear stuff. Right. But like it was like just any at any given point you could just walk over to the main stage and see what was going on. I personally loved it. Uh, this year they expanded so that the main floor area was pretty much all demoing and tabletop. Mm -hmm. So the place that had the main stage and, and that whole side of the room was all demo area. And then the entire right side, which last year was demo stuff, was like the free play area. Where like, mm -hmm. you got here's, here's some tables, play a game at them. If you have a game or you can rent one out. Um, it's a lot bigger. They actually had a main stage this year, like a main theater, which you had to go find. It, it wasn't on the main floor. Um, it was much larger. Is it, I'd probably put it maybe a little bit smaller than the PAX East main stage. Um, I don't recall how many people it can sit, but uh, they had a new panel room up there with it as well. So there was an addition. Last year there were two panel rooms, two dose. Mm -hmm. This year there were four, I believe, mm. in addition to the or including the main stage. Um, but it was a lot bigger in terms of like how they use the space. Like really, it was only a couple rooms bigger, like because the convention center apparently is gargantuan yeah. yeah it's very large yeah but they it's still i think they're only using a a, a a little tiny piece of it but it still works i <laughs> like there's most likely a wall section that they haven't opened yet right yeah because yeah. colin and i our hotel was down the block and like we went into the main convention center entrance like the big glass doors and mm -hmm. they're like are you here for pax and we're like yeah and like yeah you're nowhere near it you gotta go out <laughs> like three blocks down you, yeah you're in the convention center but you can't get to it from here and uh but it was fine. It, it was at no point did I feel like, wow, this is, we need more space. It wasn't like Boston Comic Con a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. The first time it was Fan Expo. On Saturday, it definitely was a little bit of a shock. Like, whoa, it got busy. Yeah. Like, attendance increased for yeah. sure. Yeah, no doubt. But I wasn't, it wasn't ever like, oh God, I need to get out of here. It's, mm -hmm. it's insane. They need more room. <laughs> what are they thinking? And we still managed on Saturday to find plenty of games to play. It's mm -hmm. not like, you know, I can't I can't find anything. It's too crowded. There are no games. We still found plenty. Um, go. To interrupt. Yes. Was there ever a point where it was frustrating where, like, you sit down to play a brand new game, it's brand new being demoed, and someone next to you, like, already knows how to play the entire thing and, like, plays it well? Didn't experience that. We, mm -hmm. Colin and I mostly <laughs> played game. I don't think we played... We did play at least one yep. with other people. Because that always freaks me out. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm inept baby, like not knowing <laughs> what to do. Yeah. Trying, like, I've never settled through. Catan. <laughs> I'm getting talked through the entire thing. And like someone next to me is like, oh, I'm a grand master at this. It's like, it's been out for two days. Yeah, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, luckily we, we it was all, I, I say luckily, but like that's, it was, it was Jeremy and I demoing games together, mm -hmm. whether it was like, Myself playing through a demo with the one of the creators or the salesman, whoever was had it, or them kind of guiding me versus Jeremy and mm -hmm. something, or us playing like a version of I don't know, Werewolf or something. Um, there was never a, a situation where I was like getting smoked by someone because they've you know <laughs> right they're fucking they're grandmaster like <laughs> yeah they've got three star chips I'm right. like, deck, like <laughs> nuts stuff like that it was it was um. Really, really quite fun. The games people knew how to play 
like they were in line near us to play it. Mm-hmm. Like someone must have played in human conditions before, but like we didn't, so right. it didn't really affect us. Yep. So it was it was it was lucky that way because mm-hmm. I do know that would that would kind of be a drag. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But Absolutely. everything was new for me. Yeah, and it was it was cool to bring Colin because like, and it was a little nerve wracking as well with the whole anxiety thing. Usually I'm not in charge of shows. Mm. I can normally rely on other people to be like, when we go to East, it's like, we're all kind of like a unit. <laughs> Whereas like unplugged, it's like, I'm the only one who knows what's happening. Mm-hmm. Like where we're going, I've been here before. So it's kind of on me a little bit, mm-hmm. whether it is it actually is or not. I put it that way in my mind, <laughs> you know? So it's like, it's up to me to make sure Colin has a good time. And if he doesn't, oh, I'm going to die. <laughs> For what it's worth, you you handled yourself really well because I didn't I couldn't I was tell a, you were anxious at all. The only very thing, grumpy Gus. No, I mean on Friday night. Well, I mean not not with convention related. Yeah, stuff. that was had literally nothing to do with PAX. Yeah. Um, it was our hotel. We'll talk about that uh, maybe off the air. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I'm gonna uh, blast I mean, him on the internet. You were a great <laughs> you were a great um, kind of host guide, kind of showing me what to do. Kind of would explain where we were going and then let me kind of play in that sandbox so i thought it was and you were cool with me jumping into whatever because i was i was relying on you to do that because Um, i don't have the the wherewithal to approach someone and say hey teach me this game especially (laughs) if it's you know just me and it's like right you know like i had i had you to like i can play against you or with you yeah it helped a lot well Um, i was glad if it's it was super easy to do because it was just hanging out with my buddy. It was a lot of fun, oh. a lot of lot of cool, cool games. Um, should we go kind of through them? Oh, I figured we could. Uh, I wanted to talk about some panels first. Oh, yeah, that, no, that'll please. be quick. Please, please, please get that out of the way, and then we can talk. Like we because we got a lot of games to touch on, and I want to make sure uh, some some good ones get some attention. Panels this year were lighter than last year. Last year, I made a point I wanted to see as many panels as possible, new panels, things like that. This year. Because we got so caught up playing games, mm-hmm. it kind of reversed the the dichotomy. Is that the proper usage of the vocabulary? Sure. It was. We had to take a different approach, where it's like, okay, this panel's here. I think we have time to catch that. But like, we just got caught so caught up actually playing stuff and and seeing the rest of the show. Panels kind of took a back seat this year, which is kind of a bummer. Because um, I try to see at least one or two, maybe new ones this year. We kind of only saw ones that we've seen before, but mm-hmm. it was. I had to see the Omegathon. I had to. At least one round of the Omegathon. I'm a big Omegathon guy now, ever since Unplugged last year. I brought Ken to it uh, at East um, last year as well, and it was so hype. It's a very different atmosphere between when you're playing a board game at Omegathon and when you're playing a video game at Omegathon. Right. But uh, I had to go this year because you may recall last year, uh, my man Neil, the underdog of the century. Alien. I don't know what you just said to me. That's what you could spell. Oh yeah, the people with the, had the, the signs. people with the signs because it was Neil and Lena, and yeah. you could spell both their names with the signs. <laughs> uh, my man Neil last year at the Omegathon, he was a massive underdog, got kind of picked on a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, like oh your your hands are shaky, let's <laughs> all make fun of that because they were playing a game where you had to balance stuff. Yeah, and uh, the guy ends up making it to the finals, um, playing Battleship. He ultimately, unfortunately, did not win, but because he was the runner up, he got free. He was automatically an Omega Knot the next year. Mm-hmm. And like I, I, me and Rissa were like, we were rooting hard for this guy. You know, <laughs> love the underdog thing. He just seemed like a cool guy. I've never talked to him. Um, kind of want to like, you know, be like, hey, man, you want to come to my podcast? Can I talk to you? And, uh, That's not a bad idea. Right? <laughs> and like they had the, the Omegathon poster up with all the uh, Omega Knot's faces and stuff. Right. And, like I sapped it to my wife. And I was like, fucking look at Neil. Because <laughs> he had the thing around his face, like, you know, last year's runner up and uh-huh. stuff. And, and, uh, so we had the, we checked out the first round of the Omegathon. They were playing uh, Go Nuts for Donuts, which I've never seen before. It's like a it's like a bidding game with donuts. <laughs> like you bid on the donuts, and they're different. Thi- I didn't really fully gra- grasp it. Um, but what what I didn't realize is how uh, I'm not the only one who's of this this Neil hype train because <laughs> Neil was in the second. No, group, not at all. Right? Neil was in the second group and yeah. like he had his own crowd. Everyone's like, let's fucking go Neil. <laughs> like everyone was yelling for Neil. <laughs> Loved it. Cause this guy, he just seems so like he never had like an air of like uh, ego or anything about him. He's just like, hello, I'm here to play. <laughs> um, I like donuts. Sadly, uh, <laughs> our sweet prince was eliminated uh, in the first round this year. Oh, yeah. It was a bad. my I sent a, I sent a link to my wife uh, for the stream. Mm-hmm. She was watching at home, 
and like she, we were like texting each other back and forth. And, like mm-hmm. toward the end, they were like taking the final tally, and I was like, "This doesn't look good." And, like she <laughs> texts me back, she's like, "Fuck." <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, Neil uh, was eliminated early on this year. Um, it was kind of a bummer, but uh, I was glad to see him back. Um, it was still fun. It wasn't the most hype Omegathon ever. Um, tried to get a head count. There's maybe like 250 people there. If I had to, if I had to guess, um, it's a very big panel room, mm. but, uh, it was still fun. The final round of the Omegathon I watched with, uh, my wife at home, they were playing Tokyo highway, I believe is what it's called, but they were playing like a gigantic version of it, which is a game. And I think, I think we would all love it. It's a game where like you build highways and like you score points based on if you can go like under or over other people's sections of highway and stuff. That's cool. Hmm. And you can like block them with like it, it was it was t- it was the most silent and tense Omegathon that I've seen uh, myself. Apparently, other people were talking about they played Spy Party. Have you guys seen that game? I have seen it. Where one person has a sniper rifle and the other person's at a party, but you don't know who. That yeah, that sounds awesome. I think you would love it, Colin. Um, but apparently, it was very similar to that when they played Spy Party at the finals. I'm a big fan of infrastructure, so. Right. Highways. Yes, as we all, as we all are. But the Omegathon was it was chill. Uh, you know, it wasn't as hype or anything like that. But it was still fun to to watch the Omegathon Omega Nots go at it. Um, as far as other panels go, we checked out on Friday night. They did Dice Camera Action Live uh, with the Waffle Crew again. Uh, last year, I checked it out with our pal Dave. Dave, I missed you this year. I uh, hope to see you back there eventually. Um, it was fine. I don't really have much to report on it. Uh, Chris Perkins, unfortunately, was not in attendance at the show. He's their usual dungeon master. Uh, he was, uh, there was a fill in. I don't recall uh, the woman's name. I'm a terrible, terrible person. But we stayed for a couple minutes of that, checked it out. There was a pretty, they were on the main stage, which the main stage was beautiful, if you ask me. Very, I really like the setup. It got a bunch of pictures. I'll be posting those on the internet. You can go check those out. A couple hundred people there. Uh, definitely was not full. But it was there was a, it was a good crowd for eight thirty at night on mm-hmm. Friday when everyone was absolutely exhausted. Mm-hmm. Colin and I had already been up for fourteen hours at that point, <laughs> and yep. uh, yeah, we were both pretty, and like, feeling it. It slammed us the second we walked out of the the, the theater. Oh yeah, it, we were just like wow, uh, <laughs> like the batteries just depleted. You got to get your third wind. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we almost kind of did. We went down to like the the rent a game area where yeah. you could like check out and like. Yeah. As we were looking at the tables, like I could see Colin getting more and more tired. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird. Did you, did you know they keep track of the rental games? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they scan your badge. Mm, like a barcode thing. Uh, so I saw a post from Lay Waste Games on their Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, they were pretty hyped. I can't like make the screen bigger, right? Because but Instagram. like unplugged, well, like hat they'll keep track of. Of how the many people who games, rented their games. And like how many times it was checked out. Right, oh, that's right. That's sweet. Because so like, they have a computer system and they scan your badge and yeah. the game has like a barcode on it. Like it's a like custom a library. barcode. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Literally exactly. <laughs> and so uh, they were psyched because Dragoon was checked out 124 times. Damn. Um, Which I'm is not, significant. Yeah, I'm not sure like what the other stats in here mean because I can't like expand it. It's just, right, it's right. just a screen cap. Yeah. Um, but they got like, they had the first most like, you know, uh, uh, checked out game. I think they had something else that was pretty high up. Um, second runner up was Root and photosynthesis. Never heard of it. But like, I had no idea that like they actually, that you could track that their stats and they, and they released to those the metrics to the, the developers. Yeah, they yeah. had the thing there to rent. Oh yeah. The thing. The thing board game. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. We gotta play that. We're gonna play that someday. (laughs) Seriously, (laughs) someday. But with Bob, we gotta get Bob. We do need to get Bob. We just need to have Bob in general. Just constantly have Bob with us at all times. Love you, Bob. (laughs) So the panels that that's um the panel selection was great. And don't get me wrong, just because we didn't see panels does not mean that there weren't interesting panels. Mm -hmm. It was just we our time was so kind of eaten up Mm -hmm. by by games and also (laughs) and also hotel drama. It's great when a hotel tells you check ins at three o'clock. Yeah. And you show up at showed up at two thirty, show up a little early. Yeah. Last year we showed up a little early. They're like, Yeah, you can check in. That's right. fine. It's no big deal. Showed up a little early. No, check ins at three, sorry. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. It's only it's, it's only a half hour from now and we'll mm-hmm. we'll chill. Come back at three o'clock. Hey, we're here to check in. Oh yeah, it'll just be a minute. They're here to 
they just need to clean up because uh, you need a room with two beds. Mm-hmm. We just need to make sure that we need to get one clean for you. Mm-hmm. That's at three o'clock. Four twenty comes around. Oh, still waiting. Wow. Just you just give it. And it's cool because like I paid for a room. <laughs> At three, yeah, and you won't let. And I could see Jr. like internalizing this, like silent. Set <laughs> yeah, I in the uh, couch. I got to give Colin all the props in the world for dealing with me because I was hundred percent like rage mode. Mm-hmm. And if anyone talks to me, I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> um, and Colin was totally just like, he's like, "Hey man, you know what? Do you, you want to play a game on the Switch? You want to like? I'm playing Celeste. I'm I'm rage playing Celeste." <laughs> and uh. <laughs> Like he was very patient with me mm-hmm. because I was very mad. <laughs> That's um, all bad. And but hey, they offered me a drink. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm kind of just like comp the room. Anyways, <laughs> but we did miss out on some some pax time because of that, which was kind of a bummer. Yeah, that was and that the was that was part. prime time. That was three three to four p.m. afternoon on a Friday. Yeah. Come on, that's like yeah. the twilight hours, you know. But we didn't let it get the best of us. We still played a ton of games. And now it is time to talk about them. Hell yes, Let's dude. Talk about the games. Hell yeah. Colin has been anxiously. <laughs> if there's a bit in his mouth, he's chomping on it. I am chomp, chomp, Like chomp that of a, a horse. <laughs> <laughs> With the bits. Yeah. Chomp, That's what, what a horse is. The, horse the, bridle, bits. Yeah. the bridle in the mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a brittle. Actually. I don't even know where to start. Because like I, I got him somewhat chronologically because like I went through my pictures that I was taking and those are in chronological. I don't remember many of the titles of them. So you're right. going to have to. You, you guide us. I'll the, try to. The game thing. One of the first ones we played was a new, like, a. I don't know if it's new, but it's a different version of, remember when we played Werewolf at my house at one time? Briefly. And I didn't understand the concept of Werewolf, of and I was like, I'm a werewolf. Am I not supposed to say that? <laughs> <laughs> There's werewords, which yeah. is, it's made by the same people who, mm-hmm. did, who do One Night Werewolf. And uh, it's based on, like, you know, there's an app, they had iPad or tablet out. Mm-hmm. It's based on a word, and one person's a werewolf, and the other person's like villagers, yeah, or whatever, secret identities. And mm-hmm. You have to ask questions t- to the mayor who can't speak; they can only answer yes or no, and you have to try and guess the word. But the werewolf is asking you questions to try to get the other people to get away from the word. It's like as they're getting more and more yeses, the werewolf might be like, because the werewolf knows the word. Mm-hmm. The werewolf might be like, try to throw a monkey wrench in it and ask other questions that might get a right answer, but they're kind of obscure and off topic a little bit. It or the mayor a... could be the wolf. Exactly. And is, is, is lying and saying, yeah, that's right, that's right, when it has nothing to do with the word. It's a game. It was quite interesting. It took us a couple rounds, to be honest. Yeah. And I, like, this first, like, it, it, it was one of those things where I don't quite understand the actual, like, what's my motive here? Mm-hmm. When I play Secret Hitler, I know ex- I know what I'm trying to do. Right. <laughs> yeah. But in this game, I'm like, wait, so, I yes, I'm the werewolf, and that's bad, but what am I doing? <laughs> that's what I didn't get about the time we played. Yeah. Yeah, because that time we played, I had a hard time. And it was so it. fast. I still don't think, it I don't was, even know if we played it right. I was told that, like, Secret Hitler was... Was like a like a offshoot kind of version of werewolf. Carbon copy of one. Of, oh, if you like Secret Hitler, just play one of werewolves. So like, so then we went back. So like, I did not find the backwards compatibility in that. Yeah, it's yeah. no. You just close your eyes and someone switches your card. I don't. Why, yeah, how cool, I know. Thing? How so is this weird. anything like? I don't get it. At yeah. The time. So that one was pretty fun. That was pretty cool. <laughs> that was okay. Yeah. What was your words? Uh, yeah, when I was the mayor. Was... Sorry, I was the mayor at one yeah. point, and uh, my word was link. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then the way it works is when you're the mayor, you get to, you can, however you interpret link. So I interpreted it as I was going to use link from Zelda. Mm-hmm. So someone would be like, is it from a, a movie? No, you know. And so you can keep track of yeses and nos. Instead of saying yes and no, you hand out a Check no marks and chip, chip or a yes chip. Okay. Um, so you can clearly see who is asking the most no questions, you know, as part <laughs> of the clues. Um and JR was the wolf at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and he played so well because I had no idea he was the wolf. <laughs> I was just like, man, how come JR's not getting that it's Link? I feel like he would have guessed by now. <laughs> um, and I totally blamed like some other person. The woman or, demoing the, woman, the game. The demo lady. I was like, <laughs> she wasn't asking wolf. a lot of questions. Like, and as understand. soon as it ended and we have to, you have to debate, yeah. I was like, she barely even asked anything. <laughs> and the question she did ask, she got nose on. And it turned everyone against her. It was yeah, beautiful. Yeah, it's true. Wow. It was... <laughs> it's true. He was real good. 
It, it was, was a real uh, far cry from your last werewolf game. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. is the <laughs> famously is, is the goal to get the word right or to find the werewolf? If you're the villager, you want to get the word right. Okay. But if you're the werewolf, the werewolf wants them to not get the word. Okay. And, and then, also not and get then discovered. not get killed. So if like you don't get the word, you don't have to vote. Right. Or if you I get think, the word, if you get know. the word, you don't have yeah. to do the the kill thing. Like the villagers just win. But if you don't okay. get the word, you got to be like, okay, we got to kill someone. Right. Yeah. Okay. You know. Gotcha. What else did we play? There was the Jordan Draper games. We talked about that, which had like the Japanese setup. That was like that an was architecture. Cool. We played I, the architecture game. I looked him up. Yeah. And I there's currently on the website there's eight games. He has many. Because like, like when we showed up, they were like, "Which game do you want to play?" And Colin was like, uh, "What." And they're yeah. like, do you want to play this game, this game, this game, or this game? <laughs> Call it like the architecture one. The yeah. Jutaku is the architecture one. Mm-hmm. And that one looks neat. I, it was cool. It's like Tangrams, but Based you build on, up. I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> what is a Tangram? Tangrams. I, by the pictures alone, I kind of understand the concepts of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the other ones, there's Metro, there's Coin Laundry. Yeah, the subway-related game. Yeah, the... Washi Game Cats. Um, what was one I kind of dug? Import-export looked like a shipping one. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> With, like, cargo containers. Like, he based them off his time living in Japan. Yeah. Which was really cool. Like, Real Colin, fascinating Colin got a... Um, like a Japanese like a, hand towel yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, um, that's like cool. Because Colin ended up winning. Yeah. Like, we were tied going in the last round, mm-hmm. and then... Uh, and then he took on the W. I architected real good. Yeah. Yep. So was that just like building your stack so it doesn't overlap or something? Or? In you, a way, yeah. There's a couple different things. Yeah, you had like all these odd shaped pieces mm-hmm. and you had to pick a card, you know, with a shape on it. Mm-hmm. And your card would have like a number and then a, and like a Roman numeral. And that would decide how many floors you had to build mm-hmm. and how many pieces you had to use to build that floor. Oh. And you had the thing is you can't, if you're on like the second floor, you can't have stuff overhanging. It yes. all has to be within the first floor. Right. Um, so if you had like, yeah. oh, you have to build three floors with five pieces, like hmm. it sounds a lot easier than it is, but like the first, the, the con slaughtered me right out of the <laughs> gate. The first one, like I didn't realize how quickly, uh, he was going to adapt to it. <laughs> I came back, you know, we were, we were back and forth. We yeah. pretty much were back and forth yeah. every round and, uh. Uh, Colin ended up taking on the victory. He got a little token, which he could exchange for like a free gift from the developer, which was really neat. Mm-hmm. Um, is either like a hand towel like a legitimate from Japan Japanese hand towel. Yeah. Um, or uh, one of his smaller games that he made. I can't remember which one it was. It was the the cat one. What was the, right. the one? God, Alex, come on. Washi? Washi Game Cats? <laughs> Washi Game Cats, yeah. Washi Game Cats. It was... Um, oh, what? Is it like a maze? Yeah, something like that. And it's a I w- roll. Okay. And it just seemed... I was like, out of the two things, like the game sounds cool, but like he only had one of the towels and it was straight from Japan, so I took that. Yep. Huh. Yeah. I don't um, think anyone can blame you. So, Jordan, well done on your games, man. They were cool. And the it designs on all of them were really sweet. And, and they all kind of looked like similar, kind of aesthetically. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I believe that was the first thing we played. Like, it was I the first so thing too. we saw open. It was still early. So, like, mm-hmm. and I believe, like, the, the woman demoing it, like, she was, we may have been her first customers of the show. So, there's like a little bit of nerves. I hope we help her work those out. It was a lot yep. of fun. Yep. Very cool. It was just a, a prime example of, is this open? Let's play. Yeah, she did a great job of explaining it, made it fun and, yep. and breezy. That's the thing. You got to you gotta try to make things kind of breezy and nice. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. kind of curious about the Metro game, too. Buy it. Yeah, you won't <laughs> buy it. Buy you it right won't. now. Buy it on the air. You won't. As When you mentioned him earlier, I looked up Jordan Draper and I found the website easily. I dig it. I have his business card, but apparently I, I only grabbed my big stuff. I forgot all the business cards. Luckily, I have photos of stuff as well. Uh, we did get to see for the first time, I can't, I don't even know if we've been at a show with it, the Exploding Kittens merch booth, which if you follow Exploding Kittens on the internet, they always post a bunch of pictures of their merch booth. It is brilliant in design, funny, and also, uh, pretty efficient. They had like a couple items at, uh, the Kickstarter room in PAX East in the years past. Mm-hmm. Cause I think we could have bought a taco cat and right. the pins. We definitely bought some pins from them in yep. the past. But like they had their big merch booth that looks like a, it's like a giant thing, and there's people inside of it, and you go up and you press a button, oh. and like they hold up a sign that's like you like know, a vending machine. Or- yeah, it's literally like it's like a vending machine with people inside of it, but you can't see the people. They hold you up signs. You send me a video of that. Yeah, and like when it's like loading, when like your credit card is processing because yeah. you give them your credit card, they have like a pinwheel up that looks like a, <laughs> you know, like a loading thing. <laughs> And like, was there one of like the flying cat with the with a rainbow trailing out of the butter or something? So, yeah, they would. Just, it was it was unbelievably 
amusing it's very cool watch it's people cool. buy stuff yeah you know and like apparently they were giving also giving out fruits like you could buy random stuff like oh hey i got a watermelon from the exploding kittens booth for like a dollar <laughs> and like other people were like got autographed pictures of um some f- i can't remember what celebrity it was but it's like thanks <laughs> i guess <laughs> i did pick up streaking kittens hmm. from there you could also buy like a regular table mm-hmm. like Here's a five dollar bill. Thank you for the product. Goodbye. Mm-hmm. And I got the Streaking Kittens, kittens expansion, mm-hmm. um, which uh, have you flipped through it yet? Yeah, cool. um, it introduces some new, very interesting mechanics to the game. Mm-hmm. Streaking kitten. If you had the streaking kitten in your hand, yeah. you can hold an exploding kitten. Oh, as long as streak ki- streaking kitten is in your hand. Huh. So if someone takes it, it immediately explodes. Yeah, but damn. But they could also take the exploding kitten. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Hmm. There's a, there's some some. Uh, oh, if it was like your choice, would you could give them something? I wonder. Yeah. I haven't looked into the actual instructions on so what you can do with the freaking kitten. Huh. But it's it's neat that it 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 kind of adds more layers because there are a lot of new cards mm-hmm. um, that do new mechanics and stuff like that. But it was really cool to be able to see their merch booth live because they have videos of it on their on their mm-hmm. social media and all that stuff. One thing that I really dug, I didn't get to play it because it would have taken I think too long, too much of our time. It's a game from my childhood, and I had to explain this to Colin, and like I kept gravitating yeah. back to this booth. I don't know if you ever played it. It's called Fireball Island. Yeah. Have, we, you... have we not talked about this before? What? What are you going to say? <laughs> I feel like we've. this has come up. Is it like racist? No. Uh, no. <laughs> I don't think so. was killed by Fireball Island. So Fireball Island was a game that was from my childhood. Yeah. It's the typical, like, you pull out the board, and it's like, you know, punched plastic. You know, like it's, it's a, raised up, a lot yeah. of edges. Yep, but yeah. it's hollow underneath, you know? Yeah. And and you set up the thing and you go along the map with your little guy and like, oh God, there's fireballs and you put it in the idol's head and it comes down and it crashes They're through They're marbles. Stuff. Yeah. And you don't want to get be in the way of it. Set up the bridges. You got to set up the right bridges on exactly. the right overpass. You yep. don't want to get the wrong one. And the fireball goes beneath it and you'll fall off the thing because it'll tip over. Right. Yeah. Yep. yep. So- I'm with you. There's a company that- I can't remember what the back of the thing said, but they're like, hey, we think that all games deserve a second chance. That's what it is. And they like, I don't know if they bought, they must have bought the rights or something, mm-hmm. but, and they remade it. It's so like they had the, they had the game board, it's they had the idle thing. Yeah, it's taller. It's, what? They had like a comparison. Like, here's what the, on the like on the, on the box is like a shadow. And yeah. like, here's what, how big the original one is. Here's how big ours is. And hmm. it's taller and bigger and. Because that's how Fireballer. millennials, am I right? <laughs> it's more fireball y. More yeah. fireball y. But like it also had like they introduced more mechanics to it. There, mm. there was like it was like almost deck building. Like I have a hand of cards that I can use to play and like mm. it'll influence. It looked like the game. tools and stuff. Yeah, it's not just like rolling dice and then moving my guy up the island and hoping I don't get hit by fireballs. You gotta get the gem and get back again. And it was Yeah, you gotta escape off the boat mm-hmm. once you get the gem. Yep. Exactly. Yep. And the wave of nostalgia every he, time he like we... stopped in his tracks yeah it, <laughs> and i was it... like what are you looking at dude and he was it was just like it, i could see him having a flashback <laughs> it was weird because <laughs> i could tell i was like what's happening it was uh and you were like that's it's it's that that's my childhood and i was like what it was really a cool moment because one thing we had in in abundance growing up was all those kind of i don't want to say like kitschy games like mm-hmm. they had the gimmick yeah you know uh, Colin and I were talking about the one I can't remember what it was called but you had to cross the bridge and like there's the big the big stone face at the end of it and his hands were holding the bridge and when you press his you press his head his hands shake, shake the it. bridge and you got to make it across the, the the rickety bridge over to get the jewel out of his mouth and stuff you know games like that we had all those when I was a kid because yeah. my mother was a home daycare provider for like 40 years all right so we had all those all those kind of interesting games like that and fireball island was one of the the main ones loved that game and uh it was really neat to see like that slogan you know like all games is ever unfortunately it was what what was what was the game where you basically had like two guns don't wake daddy and that's not don't wake daddy and you remember that one though you load in mr bucket crossfire 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 don't the, get caught the in metal that. marbles. Crossfire. That is in the basement. I know exactly where it is of my parents' I had one house. Of those. Yep. Very dangerous shoot game. Thing Shooting ball bearings at each other. Remember the yeah, one but where you were on the thing? They're just they're fine. You had like an elephant face. In the commercial, the like, kid go, yeah, get rings. Yeah. On it. it would shoot rings in the air, and you gotta catch them 
on your elephant trunk? Yep. No. You yes, and it came out of the elephant net. Yeah. The, the net. And you yes. had to, it was the butterflies. You had to catch them with butterfly nets. There you go. We got that for my niece. Yep. Yep. She really wanted to play that, so we, we got it for her. We had Mr. Bucket. We had Don't Break the Ice. We had all all the, uh, the ice. yep all Ker-plunk. the OGs. I like Kerplunk. Kerplunk, just the original and like my the old man with hungry hippos. Yo, I had hungry, yeah, hungry, hungry hippos. hippos. We don't mess around here. We're all not. Right. We're inclusive to, to nostalgia vintage. is great, but let's, yes, let's... nostalgia. Uh, Fireball Island. It was really neat. Uh, <laughs> my only setback, and and again, I didn't get to play it, so I don't know how warranted or 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 yeah, it needs this, but <laughs> price point of I believe seventy U.S. dollars, hmm. if I recall hmm. correctly. Yeah. Uh, but it was still very cool to see. And it had expansions. Yes. That's the thing. <laughs> yep. Like you said, you had to escape on the boat. Like yeah. there's an expansion that's like the boat part of the adventure. <laughs> it was really cool. It was like a the helicopter. Uncharted series, basically. <laughs> right? Yeah. Colin, I want to be wanna, Nathan Drake. Do you want to talk about, um, we got a bunch of things here. I don't know if there's one that you specifically wanted to talk about. Lay it, just hit me with the next one. Um, one, one game that Colin beat me in. Mm-hmm. Uh, he beat me in it because he was told he beat me in it. Because we sucked at it. <laughs> Maybe he sucked because I won. Ooh, Ooh, he did. He did. I was one move away from winning, but he was also one move away from winning, but it was his turn. <laughs> it was Mouse Guard's game, uh, Swords and Strongholds. Yes. Um, which was, uh, it was, a, I love, I, this is the kind of shit that I love mm-hmm. because it's the game that the characters from the comic book Mouse Guard play in the oh, comic. Oh, that's cool. So it's one of those things like uh what's the the like the Witcher card game like people play that. Gent? Like Triple Gent? Triad and Final Fantasy Gwent. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Triple Triad. Um so it was super cool and it was very simple and it was like this tiny little wood board mm-hmm. and you had like little like it was like chess kind of setup pieces like white versus black you know? mm-hmm. and it looked like it was like the pieces were carved like out of wood. You know, cuz it's supposed to be like this is what the mice carved mm-hmm. into their pieces. Um Really cool game. Well, it must have been really hard to see if they were so small. Damn it, Alex. <laughs> it was uh, it was really uh, simple uh, mechanics, but one of those things that's like a shitload of strategy. Mm-hmm. So um, when we went over to the booth, we had this nice guy sit us down, and we got to sit at this nice table and kind of play. We took our time with it, mm-hmm. but we started to take too much time because we were like really like, you, know, you ever play chess? It's like sometimes it can take like yeah. 45 minutes yeah, to yeah. play. So we were ta- we were at like 10, 15 minutes and, and not quite close to victory yet. And we started to get a line behind us because people could see that we were having a good time. Mm-hmm. I like to think it's because of us. <laughs> um, and uh, a lot of like, you know, you can move forward one, left one, and, and you pick up. It's one of those like you have a hand of three cards and each card does. There's only three different types of cards. Mm-hmm. You can use a card to attack. You can use a card to build a base. You can use a card to... Uh, swap was, places diplomacy so you can swap places with like the closest enemy mouse it was mm. it was really fun um so much strategy within those three cards though yeah so because then because at one point i was like oh man i'm like set to win and then i was like shit i don't have any stronghold cards now i just have to keep playing cards and it was really it was it was quite fun um so i would recommend people playing that because it was it was a lot of fun simple cool and the art style was sweet hmm. and it was also it's it's uh, surprisingly strategic. Yeah. Like, and I struggled with that because, like, there were times, like, even the end of the game, I was one move away from winning, mm-hmm. but I was, like, too far up. So I technically had to move back one and then up one again, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. I would win. Right. And, like, the guy even demoing the game, he's like, welcome to the most frustrating part of this game. <laughs> he and did then, say uh, that. That's and then, the hardest lesson to learn in Mouse Guard. Your friend just beat you. Yep. And I was like, I had no idea that I was about to win. So yeah. I was like, Yeah, I know. He like he like, he's like, Let me see your cards. And then he turns to Colin and says, like, Let me see your card. Yeah, he won. And he was like, But the, wait, not what? But Truth is, I wouldn't have won because I didn't know what to do next. I know. I didn't even understand the end game. I had to ask him because I got distracted by a German shepherd. Not lying. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, but, but but mice can play this game. How are you guys have a rough exa- time with it? It was. Mice are very. It was like creatures. it was like chess for mice, dude. Yeah, it was cool though, because you only have like four pieces, right? You only have four yeah. mice. Yep. It was cool. Now I wonder how often this game comes up in the in the book. They right? like it shows them like playing it in the tavern and enough. stuff. Like <laughs> super cool. One's enough. That's cool. The guy demoing was also very cool. He was very patient. Mm-hmm. I could tell. Yeah. Uh, we may have been driving him absolutely insane, <laughs> but he he didn't. Uh, every now and then he'd give us a hint. Mm-hmm. You know, like maybe do this. You can do this. Yeah. You know, something like that. He was a very cool guy. Uh, unfortunately, did not get his name. But if you're listening to this, thank you for being so patient with us. Mm-hmm. Um, 
one game that was pretty i'm kind of i want to get through like the the cool like um kind of indie ones we played one called uh and that's how we died oh yeah <laughs> and that's how we Which died like, and that one was cool did we did we see the second Anacon? i don't recall it looked kind of familiar the design like, of it was you, sweet you get handed a couple of cards and it's like uh it looks like a tarot deck how you died might be on the cards, and you have to like explain. Not quite. Mm, okay, sort of. I'm. I wasn't there. So how about you guys talk? <laughs> <laughs> how about this? For the rest of it, we'll say the names, and you have to guess how to play. Yeah, I'll just <laughs> pretend I know what I'm doing. <laughs> um. Uh. It was. It's really cool setup. It was like a. Um, Jr. was attracted to it because um. It was. They had a really cool booth the way it was set up because it was like um. What was the their main game? It was like uh weed parking lot or something yeah it was like stoner parking lot or stoner something. parking lot and they had like a mid-90s toyota camry parked in the middle of the convention floor <laughs> hot box <laughs> like smoke pouring out of it it was really cool design um i have a picture of it but they had this up. game that was like it was it was like a tarot deck of cards and like each card had like half words written on it like three letters or three four letters like in like varying different um angles mm-hmm. um and we each have a our own card and so it would start with, and it's basically, it's real minimal mechanics. It's just meant to fuck around game. Mm-hmm. Um, so like the point of the, the story of the game is we're deceased ghosts. Okay. And what we're trying to do is figure out while we're in the spirit world, how we died. So, but the only way we can communicate with each other is through tarot cards. Mm-hmm. So like if I had, if it said, um, you guys are looking at something pretty cool over there. Is this the game you're looking at? Yeah, we're looking at the game. Um, yes. So if I had a card that had like, um, that's a mess. That was just cards exactly. on the table. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would say like S L I, and yeah. I had like I had a corner on my card that said M E. I could take my card and like angle it and put it so it says slime, and then I have to come up with a story that's about how how it starts, how we died. So mm-hmm. we would say like slime was involved, mm-hmm. and then I would point to whoever would be next. And they would have to play a card to make a word to continue the story. Mm-hmm. And you just go until everyone's out of cards. And it's just meant to be a goofy, fun time. Okay. Yeah. It was neat. It was designed by Emma Larkins. It's called And Then We Died. Um, I, I butchered the... Uh, but it's it's also... It's ellipses. Dot, dot, dot. And then we died. Because mm-hmm. after you play the last card, it's... And and then we died. And then that's that's how <laughs> that's how you died. And then we died. It was neat. I, uh, I went a little dark with it, personally. Yeah. Uh, the word... Uh, <laughs> Colin, <laughs> I think we we were at a pickle eating contest. <laughs> oh yeah, because the word I used was dill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we were at the like Fairfax, a... Virginia uh, annual pickle contest. He comes up with this in a split second. <laughs> That's and, all we needed. And I'm like, you know, oh, we're we're deathly allergic to pickles. <laughs> and and then like the word so s e w gets played, and I was oh, like, man. well, time to go dark. <laughs> and uh. I made it was my turn. And I was like, "Oh, turns out the guy trying to kill us loves to wear skin suits, and he wants to sew our skin." <laughs> I'm so proud. <laughs> the uh, the, the dis- lady was like, "Wow!" <laughs> <laughs> like I, when you, I, I followed her on Instagram because uh, I also did buy a, did buy a pin from her as well, and I wanted to show some uh, uh, some love to her because she was really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, she would post every now and then um, like games that she would play with people, and like you know, uh, uh, in in this game. Uh, the story of a person attacking our bartender with a pool cue turned out to be stopping a lick summoning. Uh, also, curdled alcoholic beverages and bodybuilding were involved. Uh, she didn't post That's ours. Fun. She didn't. She didn't talk about bad, sewing skin suits <laughs> at a pickle contest. I guess I can't blame her. But uh, but she was very cool. That game just, was just be like, yo, I hang out with a lot of haunters. So. Yeah, yeah, yo, no kidding. It's that uh, classic New England. But it was neat. It was a cool design. Like I love. I think tarot cards are rad. Mm-hmm. I've never. I don't believe in tarot and all that. Like I've never actually had a reading or anything. But I think the design of tarot cards are dope. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think the decks are cool, and the fact that it was printed on tarot cards was kind of like a that caught my eye, and I was like, yeah. I want to know more about this. I this like that fun. aesthetic design, which is why I like that game Illamat that Joe had picked up at PAX last right. year. Like very, very similar kind of sort of in that same area. Cool stuff. I got stuck playing Bananagrams one time. <laughs> as it as you do. It, there was me, uh, Jesse, and then like three teachers. <laughs> so you lost. And I lost big time. <laughs> but like one of the teachers wanted to win so bad that she would cheat. 
and I started calling her out on like cheating and That's messed up. how she was real proud about being a winner. And what I ended up doing was like, they would get like eight words, nine words, and I would get like four. Yep. But then I'd make a story out of my four words. And I was only one making sentences with all my words. And they had nothing. You're a winner in, in my eyes. I root for you always. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Unconditionally. <laughs> What's next, buddy? Let's check out my list here that I have so we can discuss what the next game. There's so many games this year. Um, one game. Where do I even start with this? Okay, one of my favorite ones of the entire show. And mm-hmm. I have a little flyer for it. It's one of my ones that I that I held on to. It's called Beasts of Balance. Okay. Oh yeah, this one was sweet. And it was so cool. It's <laughs> yeah. like for kids, but it was just it was neat. And they seem to be a lot better than us at it in the pictures. <laughs> but it's literally Yeah, we sucked. It, we did. <laughs> we sucked real bad. And we this is a, one of the only games that uh, uh, Alex Colin and I played with other people because I was really interested and I I wait there's a little out of character cuz they have like it's like a scale almost. And there's like RF chips and all the all the different pieces, like little beasts, mm-hmm. they're like plastic animals, and they all have kind of like flat surfaces and stuff, so they're stackable. Yeah. And I put it on the thing, and there's an iPad that's attached to it, and it's like, you must remove this. You're messing up. You're not playing the game right. And I wanted to play this damn game. And I waited by this, just screwing around, doing the wrong thing for like five minutes. Mm-hmm. I was like, I want to play. And Colin was done. He's like, I'm checked yeah. out. I'm moving on to the next thing. I want yeah. to play out something else. Like, you know, they're busy, whatever. And then someone else came by and they were watching me do it bad. And uh, eventually, like, we got the, the, the developer's attention and yeah. they, they ran us through a game. I called Colin back over. And uh, Yo, we played... how do they get the whale on there like that? <laughs> right? Ridiculous. Sorry, I'm looking at the beast. So, what balance. were you doing wrong? It, like, the game had to be started again. Oh. Like, and you have to, like, scan the. Like a QR the... code, kind of, on the side of each animal so it knows what you're putting on. Okay. And so, it yeah. knows. Like, even when you're, like, because like you stack it on top of each other obviously mm-hmm. and like even when we're like four or five beasts up which is like maybe 10 inches you know off the thing yeah it knows what is on there like you scan it and like if one thing falls off it's like that's the thing if, if you topple it at all yeah. you have seven seconds to put it all back together before the volcano <laughs> erupts on the ipad and you all lose oh and like as you put it on the thing it like shows up on the iPad. Like there's like a nature scape. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, here's your. You just put the octopus on. Now the octopus oh, it's like is a in the water. Like a, it's like a. So if you put an eagle on there, like it shows like a constellation of eagle, and then it comes to life, and it's like now eagles are exist in in, in nature. this world. Huh. Yeah, and like certain certain animals like don't go well with each other. So mm-hmm. like, oh, I played this one, but like now the land animals are sad, and like they're not doing so hot. So like you gotta. It's a lot more than just stacking stuff on a scale, hmm. you know. And it was it was really well done. The, the pieces were like were beautiful. Like they were like legit. Like a kid could 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 love this game, but also like someone like me who's like, this is actually kind of really neat. Mm-hmm. And um, it totally grabbed me. And I I believe I, I think everything's in like European prices. I, I don't I believe think that was in pounds. Yeah, is that pounds? Yes, maybe. But uh, it was a really cool game. It caught my attention. Um, I hadn't seen something like that before, and it was really fun. Because Beautifully they're... well-crafted. The yes. pieces were awesome. Yep. I can't Plastics get over right? how... Plastic, yeah. yeah. And, uh, like, there were a couple... Like, we knocked it over a couple times, and we got it restacked really quickly. Like, yeah. you don't have to stack it exactly how you had it before, as long as everything's on there. <laughs> um, and it, it was a lot of fun. We we had one of the higher scores of the day. Mm-hmm. We got, like, 200 points or something like that. Nice. And we looked on the iPad. It was like highest score ever, and it was like two thousand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was ridiculous. But, uh, but that one was fun. That, that game, one was a lot of fun. That game was a lot of fun. Um, let's see. One thing wasn't really a game. Mm-hmm. There's a thing called Ar- Arkin Forge. You'll have to excuse me. Oh on this. man, this thing was sweet, dude. It, I think it's made by Arkin Forge, or it's made by. It, they call it the Master's Toolkit arkinforge.com craft your own world it was these guys who made a program where you can build you know how like sometimes you'll see like oh i made this dnd uh it's, we're in a tavern yeah, yeah. they made a program oh. where you can build them oh right alex is looking at the, the little one sheet that i grabbed <laughs> and like they had a, a tv like laying flat mm. and like they were giving demos 
and it's like, oh, hey, you want rain to be in the background of this? Well, here's like 70 different types of rain that you can have. Soundscapes. Soundscapes. Yeah. They have like, you can set different floors. This is all audio a gym ever needs. You can like hit the lights on it and then like follow the players in a with a cursor. So like if they're holding torches, like only where they are mm-hmm. is lit up. So, yeah, like so not the int- you know. So if you only want them to see like part of the map, like oh, I, I don't want you to see the end game. Right. You can black the whole thing out and like like Colin was saying, like as they make their way through, it's almost like playing a game of like Starcraft. You know, where like the fog of war. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And. uh you know, th- like you can set like ambient lighting, like when you zoom it, cause you can zoom in and out, mm-hmm. like the torches have like, you know, a glowing, you know, aspect. It's unbelievable. It was unreal. And the crazy. JR was transfixed for like 25 minutes. Yeah. It was, it was, I was watching the guy like give the spiel. It was me and a couple other people there. And the fact that it's a one time purchase of $30. What? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's exactly what I said. And, uh, it was unbelievably well done. Uh, I believe it's out now. I think you can get it now. But it was just an insanely cool product, especially if you have a spare, you know, TV lying around that you can lay flat, mm-hmm. or even you can you can design them and print them out um, if you wanted to. Um, this is the kind of thing I've seen on like years ago. It's like MIT students figuring out what to do with these giant touch screens. Right. It's like we're just, they've just been programming D and D games. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's the way to go. It was it was uh, one of my highlights of the show. Uh, I would love to mo- to learn more about it. Wouldn't mind hitting the uh, the the creators and developers. They were very cool people too. It was. It's always cool when, especially on the flyer, like you can see the creators in the back of it. But like all like they were the ones who were there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I love that stuff. Getting some some. Um, some to gab with the people who who create these things which is just so beyond something that I'd be capable of ever doing just so impressive every time he's like if you want and like the program there's so much to it yeah like health so trackers much and customization it's a dm's like wet dream yeah exactly yeah. exactly especially like cuz Colin is a is a big fan of of atmosphere oh yeah and 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 mm-hmm. setting the mood you know making sure like you know if we're, if we're like we've played like in caves and like you you like the drips in the background yeah. you know like <laughs> have it on his phone i dig that kind of stuff and um that that kind of program would just be it was, it was perfect i loved it i'm currently like do i have a spare tv <laughs> and even like <laughs> the way just, that they had just display it, display it on a tv uh-huh. and you can like okay so i'm right here you yeah. know cause who says it needs to be flat right you know they <laughs> had yeah they had the horizontal tv and had like piece it like mini figs on it so it was oh just gorgeous it was very cool we did see our friends uh at lay waste games i did see our pal jake who was uh kind enough to join us on our show back in uh in july from Kineticon. their booth was mobbed practically all weekend hmm. um dragoon so good dragoon yep picked that up uh joe snagged a copy of dragoon it was my mission i was sent to grab a copy for joe mm-hmm. snagged that copy i didn't see that we'll talk about that um, did you get like what they had an expansion pack too? Just got the base game. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the at one point, the uh, lead artist was there mm-hmm. doing signings. Like I saw that on the Insta. Yeah. He was like drawing pictures on the the dragon on yep. front. <laughs> yep. So it's like if, I think it's if you bought the 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 crazy edition with the metal pieces and mm-hmm. stuff because I bought the one that was like fifty bucks. Yeah. With the plastic and it was sorry about that, that that was a microphone Whoops. and it was okay. Thank you. Bye. Um, but I think if you got the, the super duper one, he would sketch on your box, which mm-hmm. was really cool. But the Layaways Games uh, booth, um, another, it was, it was happy to happy to see them mobbed all weekend. They had uh, uh, Metal, their new game on Kickstarter. They had, you could buy copies of um, Heads Will Roll. Heads Will Roll was there. Yeah. <laughs> I reviewed, 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 reviewed Metal. I'm not sure. It's the most metal game ever. <laughs> There's a lot of metal. Influence. It's all metal. It's its tagline was like it's like lawn games, but you know, metal on a on a table. Not with. Like, I don't know if I want to play croquet with specific people. <laughs> it's true on on a tabletop. Um, but it was it was really cool to see uh, again. You know, our pals uh, killing it as you will in the uh, in the sales game. What else did we play, uh, Colin? I I'm gonna I'm gonna defer to you a little bit. One of our probably highlights of the show mm. we got to play in human conditions oh yeah 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 recently just funded on kickstarter i believe with like three hundred thousand dollars 
uh, one of the co-developers of Secret Hitler. Um, they have a new game called Inhuman Conditions, which this is game, awesome. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, I, like I, I'm back to on Kickstarter. <laughs> um, it's if you've ever seen the uh, original Blade Runner. You know the intro scene of Blade Runner? Yeah. The Void Comp test. Yes. It's basically a test in which a human being, in this case a Blade Runner, someone mm-hmm. who hunts down and searches for replicants for I robots. I think you mean the Turing test. In Blade Runner, it's called the Void Comp <laughs> test. So if we're going to talk about Ex Machina, <laughs> then we'll talk about the Turing <laughs> test. But right now we're talking Blade Runner. Okay. But, so, in Blade Runner... Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you you it's a the the conceit of that film is there's a series of questions and tests that you can ask uh, a person that will show you with proof that they are either a human being mm-hmm. or they are in fact a robot pretending to be a human mm-hmm. because the brain it can't pro uh, a robotic brain can't process things the way a human can and they they can't empathize with certain things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this game itself is is much like that and much like Ex Machina where they do the Turing test, mm-hmm. which is the same thing, asking a series of questions to a, a computer system to find out if it has its own consciousness. Mm-hmm. You know? um, so this game is more of a, for comedic effect in, in so many ways, but it's set up much like much like that because the game is one-on-one. You have a, an interviewer, mm-hmm. uh, for our sake we'll say the Blade Runner, and the robot uh, or the human, basically the person who is being interviewed. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the beginning of the game, the person who is being interviewed will pull a card that will tell you whether or not you are one of three things, a regular human, mm-hmm. a patient robot, or a violent robot. Right. Each of those three roles has different, not quite abilities, but goals, so to speak, about how to win. Mm-hmm. A human just wants to stay alive. Uh, so you'll answer Which questions. Which can be tougher than you might think. <laughs> you'll answer the interviewer's questions uh, as honestly as you can. And when the time is up, the interviewer will say whether or not they believe you are a robot or a human. And then they will execute you just by saying, I kill you, you know, mm-hmm. out loud or whatever. Um, so the human just wants to get alive that way. Uh, the patient robot is the same way. Uh, just wants to fly under the radar. Just wants to get out alive so I can go home to my human family who no one knows that I'm a robot. <laughs> Um, and the violent robot, uh, the only way that they can win is during the interview process. Their card has certain conditions. Mm-hmm. So in order to win as a violent robot, you need to, the example we were given was, say, insult the interviewer at three different times after being asked three different questions huh. um, or, or um, in that sort of case. But each kind of, each role, if you're a, a a patient robot or a violent robot has a like a penalty or a weakness so something that you are limited to that will help the person who is doing the the interviewing to mm-hmm. kind of give yourself away like for for me I picked I picked a, a patient robot mm-hmm. and my penalty which was like my you play poker you know how someone has a tell yeah so my tell so to speak my penalty was if Jeremy was to ask me a question and mention something specifically and then he mentioned that sp- same specific thing again, mm-hmm. I could no longer talk about it. Hmm. So that would obviously, if all of a sudden I couldn't remember something we were just talking about, that's clearly a clue for Jeremy. Okay. Um, or if you are, uh, if you're ever tripped up or you take more than five seconds to answer a question, you have to hum a, a three notes of a song. Um, and that'll be kind of your, your note, especially if you're repeating things mm-hmm. like that. So the game was set up super cool because they gave us like, they sat us at a desk and they had like old school tape recorders <laughs> on our right. So it was, it was real set dress, which is uh-huh. my whole, my whole deal. They had a mic suspended, which is actually this mic, the mic that I used to record this box. Not the same one, but right. it was the same brand. Yeah. Um, but like they had a mic and like the mic was on. So mm-hmm. like you're hearing each other in the mic or in in the headsets, you know, through the mic. Yeah. And there's also like they had a program running through it to give you like heads up, you have 30 seconds left and there was mm-hmm. like very subtle music playing in the back like you could barely hear it. Mhm. And it was cool it, the headphones made it that much more intense. Was because... it like a desk lamp too? There wasn't a lamp but there was like a I big mean, old this like was radio mic so it would like this like yeah. kind of hanging like this so it looked similar enough. Yeah. It was cool. Have you guys ever seen a uh... The Jimmy Fallon uh, celebrity questions, like I think so. one envelope's truth, one envelope's lie, mm-hmm. and they have to like ask questions to figure out. I think so. And there's like 
the coffee mug is in like a cigarette on the table. It's like constantly just like smoking. It's not real. It's like yeah, a prop. Yeah. But, like I asked Colin, I was like, "Yo, do you have, do you have a cigarette on you?" Because I was the interviewer and I wanted to like, I want you know, slam my fist on the table and ultimately maybe cigars. I wanted a costume. Colin, Colin seemed legit to me, man. Yeah, he he answered all my because they give you as the interviewer. They give you a set of like cards, and you mm-hmm. can ask questions. One, I don't want to say criticism, but one thing I didn't quite get with the game was on the cards. It gave me some some suggested questions. You didn't necessarily have to ask them. Okay. You could ask your own questions, but like these had some interesting questions. You know, uh, kind of confusing in a way. Like I think they confuse a normal person, mm-hmm. uh, especially like a robot. And it also had mm-hmm. like you know. The person, answer, the, you know, a human should answer this question and and give you these examples. And I'm like, well, Colin's not giving me any of that. <laughs> uh, I don't, I didn't quite get that part. It but was... again, it was, you know, we had five minutes to, to learn the game and then play it. Mm. Um, I will say the gentleman running the booth, we we did meet both both developers. I do not recall their names. I'm a terrible person. Uh, one of them is Tommy Mar- Maranges. Maranges. I'm going to say it as New England as I can. Maranges. <laughs> um, they were all. They were both very cool. They were both like explaining. Like one time, I was this, and I had to do this, and it was crazy because like I, you know, it was. They were giving like the scenarios of like when they played their own game, mm-hmm. um, and it was very. They were. They were both like, because I could see where that could get very annoying to explain over and over and over and over and over again because mm-hmm. they have one of the most in, you know unique games at the yeah. show mm-hmm. for sure. So a lot of like, they're halfway through explaining it to me and Colin. And like they five more people had, had shown up and they're <laughs> right. halfway through the, the spiel and they want to hear it from the beginning. Yeah. So like he has to like try to fill in, you know, they were really cool. Yeah. They did a good job. And like the questions that are provided for you to ask are like the kinds of, que- it's nerve wracking to play because when you're playing, you just don't want to die. Yeah. You know, especially as, as the person being interviewed. And Jeremy hits me with a question that's like, what would it be like to walk on a, on a planet where you're the only person there? What would that feel like? And immediately I was like, sweating bullets because i was like <laughs> i have no idea you know what i mean like it was real cool i thought that game was super fun i can't wait to play i'm sure brett will love it did and you get, joe will be intense did you get it. to skim any of the other cards no like is no. It like you, you draw yours and you play or like do you get to that's one thing that's cool about it too is as the interviewer you can pick how kind of intense you want to be mm-hmm like the the cards that you draw from the questions, you can you can do like really easy. Can stuff. Can I treat this as a hostile witness? Yeah, well, like you can do like really easy stuff. Like you know, what's your favorite color? Uh, I mean, I don't know if that's one of the things, but like, and you can also get into like deeper like philosophical questions, like mm. what would you do in this situation type yeah. of stuff. So you get that option, but you don't get to actually see the questions until you draw them. Uh, for the record, it's Tommy Tommy Morant. I can't pronounce the name still. Tommy Morant Corey O'Brien, who I believe is the gentleman we were talking with mostly, and illustrated by Mackenzie Schubert. I found their website robots management is their website. I ultimately, uh, I thought Colin was on the up and up. He convinced me, you know, I was like straight and they, they give you, you have like a, an audit sheet (laughs) and, um, they give you stamps like human or robot. Yeah. And, uh, and I stamped Colin with a human and he, he deceived me. Mm -hmm. He was a patient robot. That's right. So I, I, I let a robot go, man. I just, I just let this robot back into the public. Hey man, I just want to live my life peacefully. I'm not fucking with anybody. Just let me go. You are not a good red blunter. I'm not. At all. Whatever you just said. And uh, were there any cards where you're like, ah, this is dumb. I'm, I don't want to do this. There was a couple where I was like, that that question's weird. I don't. <laughs> I'm. I don't even know how to ask that question, and I, I don't know what kind of response I'm looking for. And it got to the point where I'm kind of out of questions, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, but I was also kind of relying on them mm-hmm. a little bit. But it was a very fun game. I it was one of those things like you can print and play it right now. You can you can go to their website robots.management, uh, and you can download all the print and play cards and uh, and the rules and the blah, blah blah. You can play right now. It you know the Kickstarter was was uh, finished up back in October. Like I said, they raised three hundred thousand hmm. um, <clears> dollars. <throat> one of them is me to brag <laughs> to brag one hundred percent. So do they have ones to buy there? They did not. No, like their booth is actually very. They had, they had like two booth spaces. One booth was a table with a laptop, mm-hmm. where they like started the program and they gave you the pitch, mm-hmm. and they just had a sign that said "In Human Conditions." Mm-hmm. And then the other booth was the table, like there was no. You couldn't buy it. You couldn't. You could it just was like it was like caged off. It was cool. You could just what's, test the game. Like, what's the price point? I'm curious. Huh? What's the price? Um, I like, got it for twenty five dollars. Okay. 
from the Kickstarter. $25 uh, gets you the base level game. Like it's like Cards Against Humanity back in the day, like they had one pledge level. Mm hmm. You get the game. Yeah. And same thing with this on, on from their Kickstarter. Does it give you a, like a shipping? Like when you're going to? Uh, estimated is September 2019. Okay. And the Kickstarter was September 2018. So they gave mm. themselves about a year to put it together. They were very cool, very passionate people. They seem to be very excited about their game, which mm -hmm. was rad. And, uh, you know, Secret Hitler obviously is one of my favorite games. Um, and uh, uh, Tommy is one of the co-creators of that game. So it's really cool to see them making it was more dope. stuff social deduction a lot, a lot of fun colin bamboozled me that's what I, you get i let a vicious robot you bureaucrats in your gave him the razzle dazzle you ever retire a human by mistake jr he gave me the he gave me the razzle dazzle yeah. <laughs> i just want to grab him by the by the things of his jacket and shake him <laughs> what are you i don't know batman human man human man yeah we were making a lot of those jokes those, those, those are, are funny okay. what'd you say like face curtains I don't know. <laughs> it's like I love putting glasses on my checks cards. <laughs> Face curtains. <laughs> my head mop. But uh it was uh it was a very fun game. Getting to the end so of cool. our uh recap here, what else did we experience in Human Good Editions? Uh, it was a really cool card game, uh Fox in the Forest. Um, I thought the art design for it was super cool. It was super breezy and super easy. It was a little bit like um, Pitch. Did you ever play Pitch? No. Basically, Pitch is like there's there's a particular suit. Um, so if you if your trump card is spades, then if you play a spade, the highest spade wins, and you want to win a certain okay. number of things. Um, so it was similar to that, except, and also like War. Yeah. So it was like it was like Pitch meets War, but like the suits were like all different suits. Like they were like keys. And um, what was what were the suits? I can't remember. It was like keys. Like one of them was like clouds. Keys, clouds, like crystals. It was cool. Um, and the really really pretty. Um, and like some of the cards had like had like a special rule. So like if you play this and you and you lose, you'll you'll get to go first next time anyways. Mm. So it's it's real interesting. Like and the way that the mechanic of the game works is like. If you win too many points, mm -hmm. you actually start to lose. It was really interesting. <laughs> I liked that one a lot, and that was one of the early ones we played. One of the earliest. Uh, another game that we quickly, we didn't get to play it. We got like a kind of demo for it, but we were very attracted to it because it was very funny. Uh, was called, it's made by oh. the same guys who did Drinking Quest. Uh, it's called Le Neckbeard. <laughs> it was so freaking funny, dude. Uh, if you want to take a look at those cards there at the bottom. Oh, uh, did you read them wow. out for us? <laughs> oh. Let me pour this into my finest chalice. It's just like gripping a soda can. Um, it's a game. I can't even remember the premise of the game. Um, but like it had a lot of fun. You have to, you have to collect, you have to collect your waifus. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> And like, if you get a Chad card, like Respo that's bad. Responsibility: take a shower. <laughs> it was it was rough. So like, you have to be able to accomplish some of your responsibilities in order to keep your waifu, but like, you want to balance it with like Doritos and and, and Chad's sword collections, you know, shit like that. So funny. It was a uh, it's a very unique. Game. It's one of those games that like that you know they came up with. Like at a at a getting together, like playing games. Hey, what if we did this? And like they just made it. <laughs> uh, the stock that they had at the show apparently was the only stock that had ever been made. <laughs> the guy was like, you know, we started with like you know a couple hundred copies, and we're down to this many, and there were like maybe twenty yeah. left on the table in front of him. Hmm. And uh, he's like, once they're gone, they're gone. And uh, man, that is some serious chin. Serious, serious neck beard. Uh, the, it was so funny. The tagline bro. is a casual game for casual, casual card game for casuals. <laughs> and uh, every card just got more and more cringeworthy. I'm just socially so awkward, funny. creepy, and nice. Date me now, please. Yep. It was just... And yep. the different waifus were like booby mouse pad <laughs> and body pillow. <laughs> uh, um, PVC statue. Just, you know, just, like I, so I like funny. how Chad also has a tribal armband as uh, well. Yep. It's so funny. Because yeah. most, most Chads do. But <laughs> so uh, funny. very funny game. Um Couple other things of note. I have. Uh, will they even know that it's about them, though? Yeah, that's the thing. Uh. That's the thing. <laughs> I unfortunately I have their business card at my house. I apparently did not grab it on the way here. There was a man who, uh, 
he you know how like I apparently have the desire to kill things and then when I kill that thing I want it on my wall okay this guy made stuff like that yeah but like D and D characters yeah that was cool so like instead of like a mounted deer head mm -hmm. it's like creatures he actually came up with all these creatures himself because he has his own game yeah. that works off of like D and D rules you're scrolling through and I'm waiting to see a cockatrice no no cockatrice <laughs> um but uh apparently I zoomed in and um it was just really cool and mm -hmm. he made these are big too like this yeah. is like bigger than my head they look it and they uh, were very very cool he made all of them like himself mm -hmm. and like they were pretty pretty pricey um the this one here that you're looking at's 950 dollars yeah that sounds about right that's yep yeah yep but the guy was very cool like he he was you know he's like hey you know do you, do you have any questions and i was like what are <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know he asked me like who i was with and i was like dude you're cool maybe i'll talk maybe, maybe we'll talk to him later because he was a very uh i believe he like the original concept was like he wanted to play a game with his kids or something like that hmm. um very neat stuff uh some of them had had murder eyes like look at those those are like human eyes <laughs> i want to i want to die looking at those um he also had really cool pins he did yep he had like the gelatinous cube. Oh, really? That thing almost killed me in D and D. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I almost bought it just because I was like Ugh, my rival. <laughs> A lot of people have had problems with those cubes. I'm gonna though. wear your flesh. <laughs> 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 How was the pin game at the show? Uh, pretty good actually. Yeah. yeah. No, pins were that like yeah. I picked up a pin myself. I'm like super into pins now. Also, yeah, pins are like the thing, dude. I, it's like, what's my pin game gonna look like this week? Let me let me <laughs> let me pick out my pins so I can rock them. And uh, the 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 actual like you know penny arcade pins this year, yeah. they didn't quite do it for me. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there was a cool rainbow uh, D20 pin. Yes, yeah, that one was cool. We did we did see the rainbow D20 um, at a booth. Trying to think of what else, like Colin actually was the only one to buy uh, merch this year. Mm -hmm. That's true. Colin Snag. We'll That's talk. True. Maybe we won't talk about that because. I mean, I don't know if you want that to be. No, a surprise. yeah, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk about it because that's also part of the thing. Uh, I ended up buying. Finally, threw down some quiche, some sweet, sweet dough for <laughs> some of those heavy dice. The metal ones. The nice metal ones. Nice. Yeah, uh, a nice set for D and D. Uh, purple they are and gold. So, so choice. They are pretty <laughs> rad. Pretty rad. I'm, you got them I'm very from to use them. Uh, cardboard clothing and accessories, <laughs> which I believe they were at Kineticon. Remember the booth where we got the Pokemon card out of the, yes. the quarter machine? Yeah, yeah. Same booth, I believe. Hmm. I think. But uh, uh, cannot wait to use. They them. are <laughs> so nice, and they're like heavy in your hands. Yeah, like, it's awesome. <laughs> oh, I was I eyeball on some of these dice you're looking at level up and yeah. they're, re level they're up really was there. well like too. there was like three booths that had them and right. i was scoping all of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah they were uh they're real good stuff um and they came with like a nice tin like with the foam cutouts mm -hmm. you know so you can put them nice. put them in there wormwood was there obviously mm -hmm. uh we've seen their presence um their booth mobbed as usual yeah um Colin's like what the hell is this and i was like dude it's wormwood oh <laughs> obviously <laughs> yeah obviously it is and um have known. yep uh, i'm trying to think uh as we kind of get to the end here we've been talking a long time i think we've covered most of the games that we played we did get to see the always lovely uh joe and vicky and ali and jay and all those good guys nice ran into that whole folks. group they that's one thing i also, i wanted because they did the whole um we rented out a table to play D D. Oh yeah, like really? two like two tables with strangers. Huh. Yeah, and like because we were, we met up and they were like, "Hey, we're hungry. Let's go find food." And they're like, "Let's go to the Reading Terminal Market." I was like, "You realize it's twelve thirty on a Saturday. <laughs> You're not doing anything in there <laughs> besides standing and uh, shuffling." Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that uh, that died quick. Ended up at Panera. <laughs> Once they they're like, "Yo, we got to get back. We got to mm -hmm. we have we have to go get our table time." Which is one thing that I've seen on the internet. Like one of the main criticisms of PAX Unplugged is the signing up for and the running of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Explorers D &D League, I think is what it was called. Yeah, D&D &D scheduled yeah. blocks and all that stuff, which kind of escapes me a little bit. I don't personally, personal opinion, don't understand the appeal of 
going to play D and D with most of the people that had played D and D with at home, anyways. You know, you like, could just I'm, go play it in the demo room, like in all those game tables. Yeah, and yeah. like I could also play it at home and not waste time at a convention that I only get to go to once a year. Mm. You know, like I, I don't. It kind of. I mean, it's cool. Me. It's cool to do it, but to make it like a thing that you're mad about sounds silly. And it might also be the <laughs> fact that, like, again, I'm I'm a shy person. These people might look for. I I can't wait to play D and D with people I've never met before. Did they have a DM? Who Vicky and yeah yeah it was uh Joe and so it was one of them yeah I wasn't and, sure and if another like, one the con, like, they were doing them. like co DMs yeah and they were like switching off or something like that. Ali tried to explain it to me like super quick, but like. We met up in the room and they spent like forty five minutes just set. They were they were serious. <laughs> and like me, me, uh, Vicky, Colin, and Allie and uh, Jay, 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 yes. Um, we were just sitting on the wall watching. Mm-hmm. They were at the tables getting all their stuff. It was serious it was business. Baller. Like yeah. they were uh, putting their towers. They were together. not. Vicky's around. got a sweet new tower. Vicky's got a purple heart dice tower from Wormwood. <laughs> Wow. wow! Apparently, they did a promotion where, like, "Hey, give us three hundred dollars." Yep, and they pick the wood. We'll pick the wood. Yep. It'll be over three hundred dollars in worth. Mm-hmm. You know, in terms of like, yes, we're not going to give you a white oak. You they know? run that promotion every like a couple times a year. Apparently, Vicky did that, and she got Purple Heart, which is That's, that gorgeous. sounds pretty cool. <laughs> Vicky has more wormwood stuff than all of us combined now. <laughs> she had like two dice vaults, a mini vault, her full system. It was it was baller, and she plays really abstract way too mm-hmm. <laughs> uh did they get to bring their usual characters like are they they did yeah they played their 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 people mm-hmm. yep because mm-hmm. sometimes at different shows like you get like a generic sheet that's the thing that you can fill in the rest of the kind yeah. of stuff i think you can do that like yeah. obviously you have the, i think you have the option to bring your own but <laughs> and you go oh i'm an orc ranger today i guess let me My name come up with bing this bong. character i'm an archer <laughs> bing bong the archer there it is <laughs> It's my next character. <laughs> but it was it was neat to see, you know, and like it was, you know, someone stole at our table. With you know, only one of our tables is free. We're going to have to kick some people out of our table. Yeah. You know, it Just was go flip it. They were going to have to go throw down like real life. Um I got their backs. Yep. But it was uh they just was, walk up and go, "Oh, hey, we uh reserve this." Table. Oh, okay. Oh, my mistake. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. That was close. <laughs> <laughs> I could see Allie like cracking her knuckles there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's ready. <laughs> it was uh, it was very good to see them. Uh, hopefully their session uh, went brilliantly. They seem to all be uh, much better at D&D than I am. Speaking of which, we're playing tomorrow Fuck. night. Yes. Very excited. Mm-hmm. Got some Gonna good throw shit some polys you guys. if you guys know what I mean. <laughs> uh, One of you's dying tomorrow. We've what? been... <laughs> Collins run the game tomorrow. Hope it's not me. We've been rambling for coming up on an hour and a half. Uh, no, not sure what else I have left to say. Excuse me. It was a now. really, really fun time. It was a very I'm fun show. Pumped to go to the next one. They had uh, security like this year. Like last year, it was uh, I think a lo- little more relaxed. Mm-hmm. Last year, literally just walked in and out yeah. at your leisure. Mm-hmm. This year, metal detectors, mm. which I will never complain about keeping people safer yeah you know mm-hmm. people are, oh god the metal detectors and i'm just like i'm sorry you have a problem with not dying potentially <laughs> yeah no but kidding. um you know it did slow down the line it's i mean it's just looking around there was what was the the video game tournament oh yeah i got shot up some people yeah, at a yeah. gaming tournament yep, yep, yep. at a uh, madden tournament or something was like it that. Matt? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So between that and uh a guy was able to sneak guns into a Comic Con looking for Jason David Frank, I believe. <laughs> yeah, you're Christ. right. Yep. So, yeah. which is strange because you know the Green Ranger has his bulletproof dragon shield. So yeah, what was he going to do? Would you also, even... an entire dragon sword. So that's true too. Not if you get his flute, <laughs> which was like my most desired childhood. Which he can play through the helmet. One somehow. last thing on PAX there was a game that we saw for sale mm-hmm. that we almost snagged mm-hmm. and then like looked up reviews for it later and like pretty sure we're probably going to pick this game up but I don't know if we should talk about it yet I don't know what you're getting at it was a social deduction game was it not for sale yet or no it was for sale it was called Hail Hydra oh fuck oh yeah 
Damn. Really? Yeah. Was this licensed? Yeah. Oh. Con- er, Alex, you're gonna you're gonna love you're this gonna, game. <laughs> you're gonna fucking cream your jeans, dude. <laughs> we just saw it for sale. Yeah. Like it wasn't like being demoed or anything like that. Yeah, it was like, what just, is this? What? Here's like 50 copies of it for sale. And like when Colin was in the shower on Friday night, that's hot. <clears throat> yeah, I was. I mean, I was Stop watching. <laughs> when Colin was in the shower, I was watching uh, Dice Tower's review of it, uh-huh. and he loved it. Mm-hmm. And uh, he goes over like the mechanics and the and, and the game board. Like, here's what's in the box. Here's what the box looks like. Mm-hmm. I, Alex, you should probably this watch that game, video. Dude. It's like a ten minute video. Just go watch it. Um, we almost snagged it. Like, came <laughs> real close yeah. to snagging it. And uh, it's like Secret Hitler. Yeah, but you're playing as superheroes. But Hitler is Red Skull. Yeah, yeah. You're well, playing as yeah. superheroes, and you have to fight against supervillains. But like secretly, the superheroes are either Shield or Hydra. Right. And, it's uh, awesome, but like each person has like. I wish power. everyone could see Alex's face. So like, and the characters... <laughs> like, can we just end this episode so I can go learn more <laughs> the about characters? This? <laughs> the characters you play as are all like very like they're an eclectic mix. So it's like okay, Cap and Iron Man and Spider Man, but also mm-hmm. like Spider Gwen and Daredevil, and like mm-hmm. so like Daredevil's power is like he can look at one other person's card. He like, can it's see the heartbeat and, yeah. exactly. Um, it's rad. <laughs> and there's actually like fighting mechanics too. So it's like you have to go through like you gotta fight crossbones and you get it like and then mm-hmm. all right, next round, let's go up, up, up. Super cool. Dude. And the end the end boss is always Red Skull. Yeah. Uh, Please tell me there's not a chance for my friends to angrily antagonize me with Zemo and Strucker. I can't oh, remember. Dude, actually. I can't remember Maybe. if the bonds were there. Hydra Bob was one of the characters. <laughs> he I like was. Hydra Bob. He was. Um, Thumbs up. I don't remember if Modoc was. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Baron Von Strucker. God damn it. <laughs> oh, we did it. We did it. We brought it there. That game looked rad, though. Um, We're just going to buy it, and then we'll play it. We'll live stream it. One other, one other really quick thing that was really neat. Um, I do endorse just searching reviews for games. Right. You don't want to blow, like, 60 bucks on some game. Yep. I bought, like, a... a, a I can't even describe it. Like, a murder death trap uh card laying out thing mm-hmm. from uh from the topato con the store? boss battle or whatever no a different one of that oh okay this is at the topato con store that's in east hampton right and i was like death trap and i was like this looks neat but is it worth all this money mm-hmm. and i was like it's got four stars so that's it's positive in my book yeah that's that's more stars than i'd probably oh, and now anyway. i really want to play that game <laughs> i know i know i wish we snagged that going on uh one last thing I'd, I'd, yeah. colin had a really neat run in uh if you want to talk oh, about shit. yeah um last thing i'll make it quick because i know we're on time we ran into uh they are kickstarting and beginning development for a board game based on the comic book series the stuff of legend um which i don't know have you read the stuff of legend i have not Stuff of Legend, I don't know, you might know <laughs> what it I've is. I've seen pages for here and there. Yeah. Stuff of, it's beautiful. The mm-hmm. art is fantastic. Mm-hmm. And just the a lot of ink work. Yeah. Definitely talented ink work. It's like cross-hatching, yep. but not quite. Yep. Um, elevator pitch for the folks who don't know about it. Uh, Stuff of Legend is uh, tells the comic book story. It, take, it seems like it takes place in like the 30s or 40s, the way that the art style kind of looks. A um, young boy has like his toys that he really likes, but they're like old toys, so, like a teddy bear, a jack in the box, like a wood soldier, mm-hmm. um, a stuffed duck. You know, he's, he's you know, young. Um, and the boy is taken away through the closet via the, um, the boogeyman, steals him away. So the toys, yeah, it's, it's going to sound Toy Story, but only for a second, are sentient and they go into the closet as well and they come out on the other side of this like dark dark world in which they are now they're still themselves as toys but they look more realistically Mm -hmm. cool so the -the jack-in-the-box is like this crazy clown guy he's super awesome Mm -hmm. um and it's about them trying to free the boy so like they have like like one of the things that they take it's all the toys that go but also they take the boy's dog with them so like the puppy is there too Hmm. it's awesome um and so throughout that story the it's revealed one of the toys is actually in line with the boogeyman so the game that they're making is is again it's like a social deduction Mm -hmm. sort of what some of you might be in line with the bad guy and you're trying to free and there's like armies and stuff it's super cool and the art style is intense and JR and I are sitting there talking to one of the guys who was like talking about the game. Mm-hmm. 
and he's got a sketchbook in front of him and he's got like art in front of him and it takes us about 10 15 minutes before <laughs> i was and he was answering all my questions because i was like oh man i love this book it's awesome it's super cool i love the way it looks and he's like thank you thank you and i just <laughs> thought he was like because of the company and then like 15 minutes in i'm like all right i'm sorry did you is this you are him you're the the you're the guy you draw this yes and he was like yes and i was like oh man <laughs> so i was like I, you know shook his hand and i was like listen i'm sorry I, I was gushing like that i had no i didn't know for <laughs> sure but like i love this book it's so pretty the art that you do is so fantastic and he was just really tickled like because he I, I i was very genuine and i think mm-hmm. he could he could tell that because i had no idea who he was <laughs> um and it was super cool talking to him because i was asking him about like stuff about the book like mm-hmm. i was like i heard there was like a movie like what was going on there and he was like telling me about like oh you know netflix wanted to do this with it and mm-hmm. they wanted to go this direction they made a script but it was not like this at all right super cool to hear like real inside information yeah. that you wouldn't read on like bleeding cool <laughs> awesome super cool guy you you know his name offhand i apologize i don't cp wilson the third um yeah fantastic art check out his stuff that book is fantastic the stuff of legend beautiful 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 it's all like sepia toned mm-hmm. um and just gorgeous and there's a duck character who's like really angry and violent and his <laughs> name is quackers it's awesome <laughs> it's so good so good he was uh he was very cool one of the highlights of the show just like totally down to earth and like it's kind of it's, it was like uh, you got your chocolate on my peanut butter thing. Like you know, at, <laughs> we're at PAX and like we're taught where I'm looking through an art portfolio, you know, looking at his original art. He was working on a page, you know, <laughs> at the table, like you know, in downtime talking, with, you know, in between talking with people. He was a, a very cool guy. So so big ups to uh, to C. P. Wilson. III. I've definitely seen original art pages listed on. I've seen his name. Like, whatever so much. sites yeah. I frequent, Just, and that's one of the prettiest. That's like top five prettiest books for me. Is that book? It's so gorgeous. Hmm. Pax Unplugged was a uh, great event. It went by painfully fast, unbelievably fast. Especially because it it is in Philly, which for us isn't the furthest drive. It's about four hours if you don't stop. Um, of course, we stopped a couple times, so we're probably looking at about five hours. We had you to know. get donuts and coffee. We did have to get donuts and coffee Fair. on the way home, and. Uh, you know, on Saturday, you know, we're we're leaving at I think we left at like four thirty, which was even later than last year than me and my wife made it. Um and it's just kind of a bummer because like I just want more of it. Mm-hmm. Um you know, I've been watching the uh the uh, the VOD from the Ack Inc. show, you know, the first Chris Perkins list uh Ack Inc. show. Um very entertaining. Someday I hope to to be able to just catch more more of this show. Um but it's rad. It's like I highly recommend you make an attempt. Yeah, it's really fun. to get out to it. It's, it's just it's, plenty to do. Yep, game board games are fun. You get got to adopt that Colin mentality. Like he literally <laughs> would walk up to someone and say, "Hey, can I play this game? Mm-hmm. Is this open? <laughs> Take a seat." You know, and even if it wasn't available, like we don't have it to play, but I'll give you a rundown of it. Cool, man. Show me, show me how the game works. Mm, it's cool, and. uh the thing we've dealt with in the past was the the demo people being pushy or real chill. It's like I just want to stand here and look at it. I want to watch. I just want to look. Yeah. And then like someone starts hitting us with a spiel. It's like, well, now I'm stuck here for five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Versus like, what's going to convince me to actually sit down and invest in this? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's that uh, it's that fine line. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm that I'll, I will never understand how to properly address. <laughs> I will always smash it with the awkward hammer and, uh, and then think, you know, debate uh, my social interactions uh, later on. Who knows? Very fun show. We, uh, we grade the shows letter grade. I cannot remember what I gave PAX unplugged last year. It was probably very high cause I'm skewed to giving PAX shows high grades. Don't have a lot of criticism this year. Uh, the line was long, but honestly, it went by super fast. We wasn't were in there that, in like twenty minutes. Yeah, it wasn't even that cold. Uh, wasn't wasn't uncomfortable. It was fine. The people were great. Uh, didn't have to have any run-ins with enforcers or anything like that. You know, to to report on. Everything was easy to find. Uh, schedule was robust. Games were plentiful. Vocab words exhausted. <laughs> uh, it was a very good show. You know, I'll give it. I'll. Psh, as boring and 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 uh, lame as it is, I will give it a solid A, A for effort. Good show, 
a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna uh, agree with you as well. Uh, a to A plus even because fuck it, what was wrong with that show? It was awesome, right? Yeah, super like, fun. You can't even co- like the usual convention. You know, the food was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. You know, it, it, there's food everywhere. It's Philly. <laughs> there was so there was so many. Um, there was there was how, how do I how do I how can I word this? There are so many things. There are so little things wrong with that convention. There's so many things that can happen at like a packed convention mm-hmm. that would be like pitfalls and like annoying things yeah. and danger. But like there was none of that there. Like food was easy to come by. There was I wasn't I did not wait in any lines to do anything except in human conditions. And even then it was like 10 we're minutes chatting with the guy the, the whole time. time we're talking to the creator, mm-hmm. which is what we would have wanted to do anyways. So like there was no. I really didn't have any problems with the show. And that's with my buddy, so sweet. That's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. No kidding. <laughs> no kid. No kitten. No kidding. We got East coming up in uh, just a couple months. And by a couple months, I mean three. Three months, because it's in March this year. It's going to be a good time. Uh, Colin, thank you so much for traveling all the way to the Delphia for me. Oh, man. It was my pleasure. Thanks for, for taking me. Uh, I had an awesome time. Cannot wait for next year. And thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. Mm. Alex, Always a pleasure. thanks for listening to his talk for the last hour and a half about something that you weren't even at. It's almost like you got to listen to the podcast, but you had no choice, you know? <laughs> so uh, big props to you. Um, and also for, for telling me about Reading Terminal Market and uh, me doing my usual half listening and then <laughs> pretending like I discovered it later on. And then you were like, no, I I told you about that. I'm like, no, A you couple didn't. of times. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Very, we, we like to have fun here. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, that's, that's uh, I believe that's going to do it uh, for this one. PAX Unplugged was a lot of fun. If you can make it out to one, I highly recommend it. So, Until next time, I have been JR. I'm Alex. And I was Colin. And this has been episode 351 of Opinions May Vary.